Hi there, I'm Carly. Welcome to The Last Grown Up in the Woods. Today, I am going to be talking about tree identification. I'm going to be sticking to conifers, and for now I'm going to be sticking to um, six main types. I'm going to keep it broad, so it hopefully applies to um, kind of the temperate northern hemisphere. So, But I'll be having to use, obviously, local examples of trees, so we'll see how this works. So I've chosen my six types based on what's common and widespread. So I've skipped a few and if one of the ones that I've missed are common in your local area, I'm sorry you have got some local bias going on here. So the first one I'm going to be talking about is the cedar family or the Cupressaceni family or, or the cypress. Now this is a really large group. It includes the sequoias and the redwoods and red cedars and white cedars and yellow cedars and junipers and um, each one of those has multiple species under the same name. It's a big group so I'm going to have to be a little bit vague. I apologize for that. Behind me is my local example, the western red cedar or Suya pulcata. Let's take a closer look, shall we? So if you take a look, you'll see some overlapping scaly needles, which is pretty typical, although there is a common juniper and the redwood and probably some other species that have more um, needly needles. For most of these trees, I'm going to be talking about what they look like from a distance, but since the cedar is so different, it can be anywhere from a wee little shrub to a a hundred meter tree. So I don't think that I'll be able to do that. The same thing goes for cones. These are the cones for the red cedar. Um, their cedar cones or cypress cones are typically small. They can be berry sized even and or look like berries like juniper and yellow cedar. Now let's say I come across a tree and I can't see the crown or any of the needles and I look down and I can't see any cones. Well I can use bark to help identify the tree and cedars and cypresses tend to have very stringy bark. In fact the inner bark of the western red cedar is so fibrous that it can be used to make baskets and jewelry and even clothing. So it's super important to the First Nations people around here. Let's move on, shall we? Okay, it's time for pines. There are somewhere between 126 and 161 species of pine throughout the world, depending on what taxonomist you ask. Most regions on the Northern Hemisphere have some species of pine. They've also been introduced to some areas of the Southern Hemisphere for timber because some species are really fast growing and make good lumber. They are a very hardy plant. They can live in very hot and dry areas. They can live in cold mountain regions with heavy snow loads. They can live in super acidic bogs. Tough plants. Tough plants they are. Now I'm going to have to disappear and go to a place where pines actually grow because they don't grow around here. Despite the fact that they grow pretty much everywhere. Weird. Pines are easy to ID just based on their needles. They are long, up to 40 centimeters long, but usually more like 10 to 15 centimeters. They grow in clumps, usually in groups of two, three, or five, depending on the species. Pines can be somewhat furrowed, like this ponderosa pine, or scaly, like this lodgepole pine. Cones vary a lot by species, but in BC they are generally woody. Some species require fires, hot days, or birds to open up the cone and disperse the seeds. They can be anywhere from 6 to 60 centimeters long. Okay, it's time for... Ouch! Spruce! The unfriendly ones. Spruce belongs to the genus Picea, and there are about 35 species worldwide. They like temperate and mountainous regions. So the spruce is typically around 20 to 60 meters tall. However, the Sitka spruce on the west coast of North America can get up to 90 meters tall in profile. And they tend to be a fairly narrow tree because they tend to grow with a higher snow load. The tree behind me grows on the west coast, so there isn't much of a snow load, and it's it's pretty wide. Let me just back up and show you. Now you'll probably notice a bit of a Christmas tree shape to it and um, that's kind of normal for younger trees. As they get older they'll often get a flat top so they look a little bit more like a sausage on a stick but it really depends on where they're growing and what kind of species they are. Now let's talk needles. I like to say that you should never shake hands with spruce because they are awfully pokey. Now the needles are square which sets them up really well for being rigid. You'll also notice that the needles come straight out of every part of the branch. So when you look at them like this, it looks kind of round. 
Since I don't really want to climb in there to show you the bark, we are going to warp to some spruce bark now. So here's our super scaly spruce bark. See, it comes in little, little flakes off like that. You can hear, see here also some of the pitch. So the word pitch actually comes from the word Picea and it was traditionally used as a sealant and a glue and also a fire starter. Still is by probably a number of you. Okay, the cones. Now they can vary quite a bit in shape and size. The black spruce, for example, are probably about two centimeters long and kind of round. Or the Sitka spruce can have cones that are up to 10 centimeters long and um, be more of like an oblong cylinder. This isn't the biggest one. There are some bigger ones up there though. Um, or they can be sort of in between, like the Singleman spruce cone. The one thing they do tend to have in common is thin paper-like scales. And that's it for spruce. Remember, spruce are spiky. Ouch. How did I get here? Hey look, a fir! So the fir tree, or the, the true fir as I call it because we also have Douglas firs around here which are more common, um, is the genus Abies. There are anywhere between 48 and 56 species growing through much of Asia, Europe, and North America, with a smattering in Central America and North Africa. They are the most orderly of trees. They tend to be nice and symmetric, growing in even cones, or sometimes cylinders as they get older. Okay, let's take a look at the needles. So the needles on the fir, like the tree itself, is generally quite orderly and organized. The subalpine fir, which this is, is a bit of an exception. They're a bit more randomly placed. One of the most distinctive parts of the fir needle is at so the very end, there is a little bit of a notch. I'll have to get a little bit closer, I think. So the underside of the needles will always have two lines of stomata. And depending on the species, the top of the needle will either be green or have some, a line of stomata or just have a dusting of stomata. And they'll sit on the twig in a huge variety of patterns. In the subalpine fir, they sit all around, so the profile is generally round. But in the ground fir, like this one, the needles sit flat. Um, so let's take a look at the bark. Now, um, you'll notice, first thing, that it's not scaly or deeply furrowed like the other trees that have, we've looked at. So um, let's take a little bit of a closer look. Now the fir tree is filled with these little blisters of resin, and the resin has been used as a antiseptic and a glue for for wounds and a glue for other things. Firs have extremely distinctive cones, though they disintegrate fast and hard to come by. They are 5 to 25 centimeters long, usually more like 10 or 15. They are cylindrical and sit on the trees like candles. When they disintegrate on a tree, they leave just a stem sticking up. Now if you excuse me, I'm going to go finish this video in um, a warmer place. Not to be mistaken with true furs, Douglas furs are under the genus Pseudosuga, or false hemlock. There are four to six species worldwide and are native to Western North America and East Asian. Now for the most part, when you hear Douglas fir, it refers to Pseudosuga menziesii, which is a native to Western North America only. The other species have very small ranges. Pseudosuga menziesii is split into two subspecies or varieties, the coastal and the interior or rocky mountain. The coastal Douglas fir are monsters, we're talking second largest conifer in the world, as tall as 100 meters. The interior will be more like 25 to 35 meters when mature. Their branches tend to point up, but can point sort of everywhere, especially as they get older. They get fairly flat topped as they get older, and are rarely symmetric. Okay, so the needles. They are sort of flat, pointed but not pokey, and about 2 to 3 centimeters long. Their bark is quite distinctive. It's thick, deeply furrowed, and quirky. It's typically gray with brown or red fissures, the interior Douglas fir leaning towards the more reddish side. The bark can be up to 30 centimeters thick. It makes for some super fire protection, which is one of the reasons that Douglas firs can get to over 1,000 years old. As for the cones, if you're in doubt about your identification, take a look at the cones. There are three pronged bracts that come out from underneath each scale. The story goes that a mouse has scurried under the scale to hide from a forest fire, and all you can see are his two feet and a tail. Last but not least, we have the hemlock. So no, this is not the hemlock that Socrates used to po poison himself. In fact, the hemlock, like the spruce and the firs, 
are quite rich in vitamin C and make a good tea. Not poisonous. Hemlocks belong to the genus Suga and there are four to six species, depending on what taxonomist you ask, in North America and Eastern Asia. So I call hemlocks a bad haircut tree and you'll see the scruffy tree behind me, which is partly scruffy because all the hemlocks in this area are dying, but their branches stick out in every which way and their needles stick out from the branches in every which way and the needles aren't often same length and they also will have a drooping leader that means the very top of them will usually droop okay let's take a closer look at the needles so the needles are flattened and although they're kind of scruffy they're usually twisted so they sit horizontally um so they're not they don't really make that circle that the spruce do they're usually a nice shade of green and waxy on the the top side and like the furs will have two lines of stomata on the bottom side and you'll see that the needles are all different lengths. This is especially true in, in this species, the western hemlock, Sugo heterophylla. So the bark for the hemlock can be a little bit tricky. For the younger ones, they'll often be a little bit scaly like a spruce. But right here, you can see a few little resin blisters, like in a true fir. But as they get older, they start to get these furrows, not as deep as the Douglas fir, but somewhat similar to them. Now the cones are often very small, but one and a half centimeters to more about four centimeters. Um, a little like this one that belongs to the western hemlock. Now the mountain hemlock can get bigger like that big, but it's an oddball. So the scales of the hemlock cone tend to be very papery and light. Okay, so that was a lot of information, um, but Here's a few easy tips to remember. Cedars have scaly needles and stringy barks. Pines have long needles. Firs are friendly and orderly. Spruce are spiky. Remember Douglas fir for its thick bark, soft needles, and, and the little mice hiding under the scales of its cones. And hemlocks have bad haircuts. And I think that's it for a conifer identification. Um, if you have any questions, ask them below or any other tips you have for um, distinguishing between them or identification share them below. Um, okay, today's question of the week. Now, it's just about bear season here in the caribou, and so my question is, when you are doing a bear hang, how high above the ground should it be, how far away from the tree trunk should it be, and how far below the branch that you're hanging it on should it be? Um, the answer will be in this video right here. You know what? If you have slightly different answers, that's okay because different sources say different things as long as you're in the ballpark. Um, another video is right here. And to um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And so long and see you next week-ish.